guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jai. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome. We're we are back with Juan C's Entertainment. The compilation of March 2020, part three. I hope everyone's doing safe, staying stable, being productive with themselves during this quarantine time. So sit back, relax, and let's get back into it. It happened on a Friday night. When I came home from work, I texted my friends and told them to grab a drink with me, but they didn't feel like doing anything this weekend. I'm 24, and all my friends started working too, so I understand that they wanted to stay at home, mm -hmm. be cozy, and just relax. I was home alone at the time, sitting all by myself, and then something just came to my mind. No video game? No I just TV? wanted to drive somewhere. So I got in the car again and drove for a while. No internet. Then I tried to find a spot to park my car to have a smoke. There was an underground parking lot that was placed in a one-way street. <clears throat> it was around 11.30 p.m. Even though it was a big city, there wasn't much activity around this area. After smoking, I walked back to the parking lot through the dark, small streets. Are you just but I was go getting home? anxious and thought to myself, what if someone is following me? I'm out here all alone. So I turned up the pace and reached the parking lot. There was nobody at the parking lot, so I was relieved. But at that very moment, someone behind me shouted loudly. <laughs> I got the chills and the hairs on the back of my head stood up. I slowly turned around, and there was this huge guy in a hoodie. Oh, wow. He came to me and started talking. He was talking about how he just came out of prison, and that his wife changed the locks on the doors. I noticed that his right hand was in the pocket of his hoodie. I swear I saw the outline of an object in that pocket. I immediately thought it was a knife. Crap, this is not supposed to happen. I'm gonna die in here, I thought to myself. With a quivering voice, I told him very politely that I had to run the graveyard shift at work so that I could Boy, leave. Book it. And that was when his voice started to change. He angrily said, No, you have to help me. I reached in my pocket and took out $30. That was the only money I had on me, and I just handed it to him. Shaky. He took the money, but became angrier and shouted, Hey, man, is this the only money you brought? He took another step and was much closer to me. But what happened Keep next was a miracle. A loud sound came from a door that was shut outside the parking lot. He got distracted and turned his head around. And that is when I rushed to the elevators. It was a separate room which was only accessible to people who parked their cars there. Because the door could only be opened with the parking receipt. I got into the elevator safely. But then I heard his loud footsteps behind me. I ran to my car, got in and started it. I slowly pulled up to the gate, and it opened. Although I could see the guy charging at me when I tried to get out of the parking lot, it was too late for him. I stepped on the gas and drove away as fast as okay. I could, and it only took me 15 minutes because I was using too much gas. To this day, I can't stop thinking about what would have happened if that door outside the parking lot wouldn't have made that loud noise. Hmm. Someone broke into my house while I slept over my friend's house. My name is Cam. I'm 20 years old and this happened about 10 years go, ago. Let's go, Damien. I used to live across the street from my friend Eric. One Saturday, my parents were going away for a night, but I didn't want to go. So we all arranged that I went to my friend Eric's house. We ordered pizza. I spent the night playing video games and watched a few movies. I'm not sure what time it was. It was pretty late, probably around one in the morning, I think. I was flicking through Eric's PlayStation games when Eric said, I thought your parents were going away for the night. I said, yeah, they are. But there's someone in the house, Eric said. Confused, I got up and looked out the window where Eric was looking, and there was a light on. And someone was walking around in one of the rooms. What is going Eric on? asked me who that could be. I told him I had no idea. My parents were out of town for the night. And we never had anyone come over by our house unannounced, especially at this time of night. Instead of waking Eric's parents or trying to call the police, we came up with this idea to sneak out and investigate who was in my house. 
you are crazy. Looking back, this was the dumbest thing I ever did. But we were just young boys. Yeah, it was. We grabbed a couple of flashlights, snuck out of Eric's back door, and headed over to my house. Flashlights. Wow. We didn't even think of how we would get in. But we didn't need to because the front door had been forced open. Upon entering the house, we saw there were damp, muddy footprints leading upstairs. I'm not sure if whoever was inside heard us, but we started following the footprints, and one of the lights turned off. Uh-oh. At this point, I was getting afraid, and I told Eric, we should just leave and tell someone. Eric proceeded upstairs, however. Eric, I didn't follow him up. I kept whispering to him, Eric, come, let's go. He ignored me and continued going up. He walked into one of the rooms, and I lost sight of him. I then bravely went upstairs to see where he went. I walked into my bedroom, and a foul odor hit me in the face. Ugh. I kept whispering Eric's name, but he wouldn't answer. Then I heard something. It sounded like sobbing. I was scanning the room with my flashlight. In one of the corners of the room, I could see Eric's shoes. I raised the flashlight, and I saw a disgusting, dirty hand. That was covered in cuts and dirt covering Eric's mouth. The next thing I saw would haunt me for the rest of my life. I raised the flashlight once more and the person covering Eric's mouth was a man who had massive grin on his face. A vile beard and long straight black and gray greasy hair. The way he was staring at I gotta me. Smash his, hair up. his eyes were wide and filled with rage. I screamed as loud as I could and ran out the bedroom. The man proceeded to chase me down the stairs and out the house. I thought I was this animation, man. Thankfully, when he ran outside, there was a police car pulling into the driveway. Someone had phoned the police when they saw flashlights and someone wandering around the house. The man saw the police and ran off. As he ran, there were things dropping out of his pocket, screwdrivers, a few other small tools. That's all the evidence, all the um, DNA they need. It wasn't a tool. It was a long, rusty, dirty blade. Oh. Thankfully, the man was found and arrested. Eric was unharmed, and so was I. The scary thing was, the man didn't seem to have taken anything. So that suggests his interests were much, much more sinister. Eric and I remained best friends. But he, nor I, will ever forget this terrifying experience. True Lake Horror Story. I'm a 16-year-old girl, and this took place in July of 2019. Me, my parents, and two sisters were having a family gathering at this lake where we all used to go. We hadn't been to this lake in a few years, so I was excited to be going back. Just to give you a general idea of the place, when you first pull into the path to head up to the lake, you have to drive for a few minutes a very narrow path surrounded by woods. And you come to a fork in the path. One leads to a picnic area and the other leads to the lake. Mm -hmm. Then you continue up the path to the lake and after a few more minutes come across another fork. One side leads to one entrance to the lake and the other side leads to another entrance that's across the lake. After that you still have to drive for a few more minutes until you get to the parking area so it's pretty tedious. We'd already been to the lake for a few hours, and suddenly I got a headache. My mom gave me the car keys so I could go sit in the car with the air conditioning on. I Girl, took the keys water. and hide, started hide, to hide, walk hide. back to the car. So. The parking lot and the lake area were a little way off apart from each other. As I was approaching our car, I saw a man who was looking through the car windows. He was a skinny, old white man with shoulder-length gray hair, and he wore old clothes. I stopped walking and asked him, Sir, what are you doing? He slowly turned to me, stared at me for a moment, Smart. and then walked away. Oh. I thought it was weird, but I just ignored him yeah. that he might be just another visitor in this area. And I was totally wrong. I got into the driver's seat and locked the car. I turned the car on and tried to call my mom to tell her about the man, ask if she could send someone to come sit with me. 
but there wasn't any cell service out at this lake, so the call never went through. Wow, not even I close? then looked to the this right dude? and saw the old man looking at me through the passenger side window. He was trying to open the door. I screamed and desperately tried calling my dad and then my aunt, hoping the call would somehow go through. Girl, honk but of the horn course, or something. it didn't. I was freaking out at this point, and I honked the horn there at the go. man, hoping that someone would hear and come see. I was blaring the horn, but there was no one else Where were the in the area. I was too far away from the lake area, so my family couldn't hear me at all. The man stopped, stared at me and gave up trying to open the door. And then he stepped back from the car while saying something, but I couldn't hear him. As he disappeared, I got out of the car, locked it, and rushed back to the lake area. When I got there, I slammed the keys on the table and my mom asked me what was wrong. I told her, and as I was talking, I could see that she got angry. Uh -oh. She looked at my dad and uncles and told them they needed to come with us back to the car. I started crying and shaking as we were walking back towards the cars. Two of my uncles ran into the woods and my father drove down to the path. As I was crying, I just stood there. My two aunts and grandmother hugged me and told me that everything is okay. Mom looked in the windows of the other cars in the area to see if the man got inside one of the cars, but all the cars were empty. A few minutes later, everyone was back, but they couldn't find that old man. Hmm. Soon we left the lake, and as we were leaving, we saw a park ranger. We told him everything, and he looked confused. He said that no one didn't go out from this area before us, which meant that man came from the woods in this lake. When I heard of it, I was terrified, but now I'm glad that I'm okay. But I still think about what could have happened to me I if the that. man managed to get inside the car. I, I predicted my father's death. I'm 17 now, but this happened when I was 13 years old. My mom couldn't pay for the household on her own since my parents divorced. So she rented one room and I used to share a room with my mom. I had one older brother, and he was staying with his dad. And that night, I had to sleep around 9 p.m. because I had school the next day. I shared a bed with my mom. She slept on the other side while I slept close to the wall. For most of the nights, I always fell asleep pretty fast and well, but sometimes I had dreams or nightmares since I was little. However, this nightmare was different than any other nightmare I've ever had. I was walking in a room, and I saw an older man standing near the closet. I tried to speak, but when I opened my mouth, nothing came out. I had no choice, so I walked to him. And when I got closer to the man, he suddenly collapsed on the floor, clutching his chest. A heart attack. His eyes were so wide almost bulged out and his mouth was also wide open he looked like he was gasping for air his body was trembling terribly i couldn't get much closer to him anymore because i was too scared to see it his skin color became paler and paler like his warm color was being sucked away i only froze and felt my own heartbeat faster than ever before I felt like my chest was about to burst open in any second. The man was gazing at me, and soon the pupils of his eyes went up slowly. That was the most horrible moment in my life. Then suddenly, I could let my voice out, and when I got up by myself, I saw my mom's worrying face looking at me. I could only let out a sob. I thought everything was fine. Nothing could be more serious than this. But I freaked out when my mom finished the conversation that she had on the phone. Once she ended the call, she told me it was my older brother and that dad just died from a heart attack. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe what my mom was saying. I immediately told my mom about my nightmare. 
she only stared at me in pure shock, and we both didn't say anything while we hugged each other. That day, the only thing I could do was pray for him to rest in peace. Hmm. Wow. That's crazy, you guys, how you're sleeping and all of a sudden, um, you have a dream of your father's passing. Yeah, that's crazy. And the man who was creeping around the park, the lake, he's got to be some kind of a goblin just to, come, just to come out of nowhere and saying the sheriff didn't see nobody come before them. That's crazy. That is crazy and bizarre. Yeah. That was, I don't know which, this was, um, this was March 2020 compilation of Wanty, and I will be 12 horror stories. I will be doing, I don't know if I should do the April compilations or like watch them together. I'll probably just do a compilation of that at the April. Yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in and much appreciation for all the viewers, all the subscribers, your 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 love and appreciate it. Positive vibes to you. Blessings upon blessings. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciation again, again. So thank you guys for tuning in. Stay safe, stay productive and it's your life, do what you want. And and guys, leave any suggestions what us react to. Any more suggestions? I'll probably find some. I don't know. But leave any suggestions. So thank you again. It's your life. Do what you want and do it positively. Peace.